David Henry Thoreau said, and you've probably heard the quote, most men lead lives of quiet desperation and die with their song still in their heart. If you really stop and think about that, I wouldn't have to say anything else this morning. I could just sit down right now because that would be, we could have 10 minutes of quiet reflection on the concept that most of us, maybe even in this room, are leading lives of quiet desperation. And at the end of our days, we may die with our song still in our Years heart. Years ago, when I started in the business, calling on bicycle retailers while I was still in law school, I noticed so many of those bicycle retailers were leading lives of quiet desperation. Uh, even though they were entrepreneurs, even though they were owners, even though Theoretically, they had chosen their career. They hadn't had it chosen for them, you would think. Many of them were just getting by. Many of them weren't having a great time. Many of them were not happy in their work. As I got to know them and became their friends, I found that, unsurprisingly, most of them didn't start out to become bicycle dealers. A lot of them actually had inherited the business from somebody else. Uh, some of them, it was a hobby that they had turned into a business, but when you turn your hobby into a business, sometimes it doesn't become that much fun anymore. Some of them just decided they want to be in some kind of a business, but they really don't have a passion for the specific thing that they're getting into. My job and the thing that got me started doing this, you know, uh, 39 years ago, calling on those bicycle retailers, as I was going door to door and talking to them and dealing with them and trying to help them with uh, just the small niche that I was in of bicycle security products, I, I started to see where I could maybe give them an idea of how to make that business better. But I would notice in this shop that this guy was doing this and this shop over here wasn't. And this was working for this fellow over here. And I would just carry that information to this guy over here. And i say, hey, you ought to build this display like this, this guy down the street that's kind of working for him. And then I'd go back in a month and this guy would have built the display and he was getting some great sales out of that and he was excited about it. Well, that made me excited. And so basically I've spent the last 39 years of my career helping small businesses to become stronger. Now in the meantime, I, I built some of my own businesses, but, it, but as I was doing that, I always was writing the articles or writing the books that was designed to help small businesses become better at what they do so that they could grow and not only grow, but impassion them to, to, to take a hard look at what was inside that, where was that song? Where could they grab a hold of that song? And if the song wasn't there, then maybe you should be doing something else. My book, uh, Running a 21st Century Small Business, starts out in the first 100 pages taking an entrepreneur, either a potential entrepreneur or a current entrepreneur, through a series of, of, of analyses of themselves to say, should you be an entrepreneur? Are you willing to put in the hours? Are you willing to put in the time? Are you willing to walk away from friends? Are you willing to walk away from your hobbies? Are you willing to, to, to risk your resources uh, in order to become successful as an entrepreneur? And on the other side of the coin, do you have enough passion to carry you through on the days when nobody shows up at your door? Or on the day when you make 20 calls, uh, uh, knocking on doors and you get 20 no's? Are you still going to be out there the next day uh, looking for that first yes after 20 no's the day before? As I've gone out and started dealing specifically as a, as a, as a consultant with small businesses, um, the song in my heart is really getting realized uh, to the greatest extent ever. So I'm now in a position where I am a dream maker. I look at myself, it was originally going to be what I was going to call the company, Dream Maker. And I just, uh, for whatever reason, I. I thought maybe that sounded presumptuous. <laughs> I just thought, boy, if I call myself the dream maker, people would go, yeah, Randy, yeah, you're the dream maker. But the truth is, after a year and a half, truly that is what's happening. I, I, I got a new client a couple of weeks ago down in Maui who is in the ring. Uh, they do um, custom ring design. And their business has been there for a long, long time, but one at a time, the partners have gone away until it's just this man and his wife. It's just the two of them running this little ring shop uh, over on the wet side of the island. And they signed up with my uh, company, and a couple of days ago, she sends me an email, and she goes, we're number one on Google Maps 
uh, under custom wedding rings, which is their primary niche. And she couldn't be more excited. Well, that makes me excited because in two weeks, we took them from being almost invisible on the internet to where now she's number one. She's at the top of the list on Google Maps. 100 years ago, Lloyd Garrison Bumstead I started a bike shop out in Ontario. His son took it over from him. The son, that son took it over from them. And then about 30 years ago, Lloyd Garrison Bumstead took it over from that dad. And now Lloyd Garrison Bumstead, who is now the fifth in that line, is 20 years old and he is taking over the business from his dad. Two years ago, they moved into a new location, a new facility, and it was very much more expensive than the one they had, much, more, much higher rent. And the landlord had made all kinds of promises about what was going to happen in terms of traffic, and none of that ever developed. And so they couldn't pay the rent. They went back to their old location, and they started up again with just not even enough sales to their family bills. And I went in there about a year, just a little over a year ago, and now a year later we're planning their 100th birthday celebration in November with a $10,000 budget. This company was virtually going to be gone after 100 years, just before their 100th birthday. But just with a few little things, we were able to give them massive internet presence to where if you go into Bicycle Shop Ontario, Bicycle Shop Chino, Bicycle Shop Mona, Bicycle Shop Claremont, Montclair, they have massive presence on, on, the, front, on the first page of Google. Their sales are now somewhere around 50% higher than they were this time last year, and we're in a recession. And as a result, they're not only paying their bills, but they're putting money aside, and they're building inventory. And as a result, Lloyd Garrison, number five, who a year ago had no intention of staying in the bicycle business, now is very excited, is very passionate, and very interested in continuing the legacy into another generation. So this is, to me, what dream building is all about. And I can walk into a company and see somebody who is desirous and, and, and cares enough about their client, about the business, about the territory that they're in, and they want to grow a business. And I can just take my area, my little area of expertise, the, the stuff that I've been working on for my 40 years, and somehow use that information to be able to help them build that business and to, and to, and to gain their dreams. And the dreams can range. It's just amazing, and, and, and some people wouldn't think about this. You think, well, an entrepreneur, was an entrepreneur and want? If you walk in, what the, you ask them what their dreams are, isn't it always gonna be the same? To make money and to, and to you know, make, make a, become a millionaire and to retire rich? I gotta tell you, that's just not the case. I would say at least a third of the folks, when I ask them what their dream is, is to have more free time for their family. Okay, because what? They've been in business for three or four or five years, and what happens in that first three or four or five years? You're working 70 hours, you're working 80 hours, you have no time for your hobbies, no time for your family, and so one of their dreams, one of their, one of their major goals is to be able to find more time for their family. I have another shop who's been in business since, uh, their family's had the business since 1954, and the third, second and third generation are running it now. And um, they've never had a million dollar a year. Last year, we got them to 996. <laughs> and the funny thing was, I went to the guy in October and I said, look, you're close, you can possibly do a million dollar a year. What can we do in this last three months? What can we do to just give it another punch so that we can take it over a million. He goes, Randy, I am so exhausted. I, we've had so much business. I just, I, I don't want to do anything else. He says, just keep doing what we're doing. We'll be fine. And, and, and in February when I went in and he had his final numbers, he goes, we missed it by $4,000. And he says, I should have listened to you in October. So this year, they're already ahead of last year, uh, year to date. And so they have a real uh, high likelihood of, of having their first million dollar a year. Building dreams. That's the song in my heart, is to help other people be able to, to, to gain the dreams that they have for their small businesses and for their families and for their retirement. Um, and if I can help enough people build their dreams, I think there's a strong possibility that I'll be able to build my, I'll be able to get my dreams uh, resolved as well.